Welcome my Eagles fans to week 17, the last week of the NFL season, regular season, and the last week that the Eagles will be playing this season uh, because the Eagles are 4-11 and 11, and the, uh, the Giants are coming in at 8-7. and seven. They have some outside hope of getting into the playoffs uh, and defending their uh, Super Bowl title, uh, but we won't be talking too much about them. Uh, this week is more about uh, Philadelphia and how this might be the end of an era. Could be, but at the same time, I'm not going to be saying goodbyes yet because I want to give the respect to the players and the coaches and, until things are actually official. So, last week, go back for a sec, last week, uh, Nick Foles played, I believe, very well. Of course, he had the tip, the tip ball that turned into the interception, but overall, the guy played very well. Uh, and once again, I think he's really showing Philadelphia, whoever is making decisions next year and, and playing personnel, that this guy is a gamer. Um, he, uh, he did it again as far as driving down the field in the last few minutes, last minute or so and getting us in a position that at least we can you know, throw into the end zone. Now, the grounding penalty, you kind of can't blame him. He's going to try to make something happen. Um, and he tried to get rid of the ball and it didn't work out. But he thinks very fast on his feet. And he does smart things at the end of the game. And one thing that's plagued us for years um, under Andy Reid is the two-minute offense. And that two-minute offense uh, seems like it, you get a jolt of energy from Nick Foles and how he commands the game. I truly do believe that Nick Foles fits in the Andy Reid system very well. I don't know um, what that would mean for anybody else uh, that would come in, which brings up some very interesting questions. But as you know, this might be Andy Reid's last game as a Philadelphia Eagles coach. And this might be the last game as Michael Vick uh, era in Philadelphia. Like I said, nothing's official yet. And Jeffrey Lurie hasn't said that he is going to fire Andy Reid if he didn't do better than 8-8 eight eight like he did last year. He just said it was unacceptable. And that might go to show you why some of the moves were made um, to show that we're trying to make some kind of progress somewhere. And there's a lot of credit that needs to go to Andy Reid. And I'm going to... Me personally, I'm going to say that there's a lot of credit goes to Andy Reid where he even admit that it was a mistake firing Juan Castillo before getting rid of Jim Washburn. He said, hey, maybe I should have done it in a different order. I mean, hey, the guy makes mistakes and, you know, he, he fessed up to it. Um, also, something that we never see Andy Reid do is throw his team underneath the bus no matter what you know the problem actually is yeah he does have some really dry press conferences but he has never thrown his players and his team underneath the bus and he's always taken responsibility which is something that people get a little frustrated even with Mike Vick this last game where Michael Vick was talking about how the offensive line was shuffled around and you know that made things really hard uh, where if you're the coach and the quarterback, you take all the blame and you dish out all the praise whenever you can. And Andy Reid, through his entire career here in Philadelphia, has done exactly that. So we can't necessarily complain about that. As far as Eagles fans, the thing that we complain about is the visible passion we see in somebody and the cutthroat, you know, kick the guy into the dirt kind of mentality when it comes to playing football against our NFC East rivals and against other teams and not just uh, playing it safe, which you saw last week playing against Washington, going forward on fourth down a couple times, it resulted in a touchdown. You know, you, you got to take risks and you got to do things outside the box earlier in the season. And I think, you know, Andy Reid's on his last year of contract last year, uh, next year, he's owed $6 million. I mean, there's a lot of money out there just to have a guy go away. And especially in the last year, you know the guy could be better off taking some more risks. And, and that's part of it, taking some risks. The other part is getting the young guys into the game uh, to see what they got and allow for them to contribute earlier instead of later. Brandon Graham is 
<laughs> coming on. The guy looked like a complete bust, right? He was picked before Pierre Paul, which everybody knows is, is a beast that we're going to see in New York uh, tomorrow. And, you know, he's coming on. You know, we, we drafted better. Maybe it was Howie Roseman that, that uh, was able to draft a lot better this year and draft defense good, finally. I mean, we've just not hit on defense at all, but... Lately, we're doing okay. Okay. Now, we still need safeties. I like Anderson. We still need some bigger, hard-hitting safeties. And we can replace our corners with somebody that you get out of the draft. And save a lot on there, too. And dish out some of the money in-house. But this game to, you know, on Sunday uh, is played against a Giants team that does have some outside hope. Michael Vick will be starting because Nick Foles played an entire half with a broken hand. Now, if that's not awesome, I don't know what it is. That guy is proving that he's just tough. Uh, and Michael Vick might be starting for the last time. He said he won't restructure his deal. That's what is said around the league, whatever, that he's not going to restructure his deal in the season to free up room or in case he becomes a backup. And we might find out earlier than later, but this might be his last hurrah as Philadelphia quarterback and you know he does have some weapons back he still doesn't have D-Jack back but you know you have LaShawn McCoy which is pretty good too and we're going to go to New York I think the last time he actually played New York in New York was the Miracle of Meadowlands game where we came back and beat the Giants and that would be a nice way to end the season we have a lot of thinking to do a lot of changes that need to happen, so we go from right now 4-11. and 11. If we win, we'll be 5-11, and 11, which will be like Andy Reid's first season uh, as coach. Or we'll be 4-12, and 12, which will be Andy Reid's worst win total in a season ever. And then we'll see what, what comes there. And I'll have some posts and updates during the offseason when things actually become official. Uh, and I'll be looking forward to that. But right now I'm looking forward to just beating the Giants. The Redskins and the Cowboys are playing for the division. Uh, New York is playing for a wild card if possible. And what better way to end the season than to destroy the hopes of another NFC East counterpart and show that we're not going to give up and we're going to play to the very, very end. And that's what we do in Philadelphia. And then we need to look forward to what the future holds. I'm looking forward to that part of the game, just watching the game and just seeing that the Philadelphia has fight in them, and then moving on from there. There's nothing else much you can really say. I'm not going to go break down every aspect of it because all we're looking for is a win and looking to be uh, respected no matter what our record is. So outside of that, I'm not going to go into who's going to be the coach and what all the change is going to be because I don't know. And that speculation is for the off season, and that happens after the game. But first comes to first is beating the New York Giants, and then seeing who wins out of Washington, Dallas, and and I'd never want to see Dallas win. <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, I think RG three has done very well. So you know, hey, more power to you guys. Either way, you can't talk trash on Dallas or Washington because those guys got themselves in a position to play for the division. So I know I don't like Dallas at all, but if they win the division, they deserve it because they've played all the games. I know a lot of close ones, a lot of one-point games against bad teams or overtime victories. Hey, they won. So as an Eagles fan, you have to be real about that no matter how much it hurts. And one other thing i got to say, even though I kind of don't want to say it, but uh, Donovan McNabb. He, hey, he's got a picture right here. I, I liked him as a quarterback um, playing for our team. But, man, that guy just doesn't know when not to say anything. And it seems as if, if he always tries to give his opinion when it's really not needed or trying to give that final little punch. And, and finally, he said something the other day, I think it was even yesterday, where you know, hey Philadelphia, you know, notice it's it's not that easy to get into the playoffs and go to NFC Championship games and win and, and all this other stuff. And I get it. I get what he's saying. 
where he had probably one of the most successful careers in Philadelphia sports uh, without winning uh, a championship. But we don't need your constant trying to validate your career here because your stats and your record should prove it. And you let us sit and talk about it, but when you're sitting back and trying to put that information continuously out there, say, I told you so, I told you so kind of thing, that just ruins your own um, legacy that you left on the city, and, and that's one of the reasons why you didn't work out here. You extended plays. You did some amazing things. We went to five NFC Championship games underneath you. We went to a Super Bowl. We put up some great numbers. Uh, and you and Andy Reid together uh, were, were better than most Eagles teams of all time. But <laughs> you're not taking any pages out of the people that were successful before you that didn't talk the way that you did. And that's one of the reasons why the city loves you. There's a reason why the city loves Brian Dawkins, uh, and he doesn't talk like you do. There's a reason why the city will always talk great about Brian Westbrook, uh, Wilbur Montgomery, uh, Dick Vermeil, uh, you know, you, you, you can, Harold Carmichael, Ron Jaworski, uh, Randall Cunningham, I don't know if I said that or not, but Randall Cunningham and Jerome Brown and Reggie White. Seth Joyner and Wes Hopkins and Eric Allen, or he, whatever. Um, you know, Keith Byers, and Keith Jackson. I mean, you can keep going on and on and on with this list of people that played in Philadelphia that did not win a Super Bowl, but the city loves them and will talk great about them because of the way that they carry themselves. Jeremiah Trotter. McNabb, there's no other way for me to say it. Just stop talking. Stop talking and humble yourself and stop talking. Stop talking because the things that you've done here are getting so masked by the things that you're saying wrong with your mouth. So I, I'm giving you this much because actually I liked you as a player as far as what you did on the field, but man, you just kill yourself with your mouth. Just if you didn't have that mouth, I think you would be a shoe in for it. Uh, not for, for the Hall of Fame, but because you keep talking and because you don't know how to carry yourself, because you don't know how this city really works, otherwise you stop talking so much, that's what's keeping you away from becoming immortal in our city. So, McNabb, please, just hit the timeout button and just fade away correctly or do something to help the team and help the development of our players. We don't need that. But, once again, this is Potentially, Andy Reid and Mike Vick's last game. So let's just go out with a victory. Uh, let's go out with some fight, and then let's go out with some pride. And if anything does change afterwards, I'll give an update video. But until then, as always, go birds. Bye, Eagles, bye, on the road to victory.